everybody, it's Sam at Mix.Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these gift bags which fold completely flat. So they're perfect if you want to make a batch of them and then you can just keep them stored down the side, you know, somewhere in your craft room or, you know, in any room in the house, but you can just keep them stored away until you need them. So I actually done these two during my Facebook Live. Um, if you haven't you know, seeing the lives that I've been doing. I'm doing them every other day over on my Facebook page and um, I'm just, yeah, having a chat and just, it's just a nice couple of hours just to kind of, you know, you can craft along with me or you can just sit back and watch. But I did do these ones here and they will hold a box of Tunnock's Tea Cakes. So you can see the box inside there. This one I'm actually going to give to my neighbour. I'm just going to leave it on their doorstep, knock on the door and then step back. And um, it's just a little thing because they're, they're not feeling well at the moment. So I thought I would just, you know, everybody likes Tannix tea cakes. So, and I know that they will enjoy them. But basically you just undo this bit here and you can see the chocolates. Take that out and then the whole thing you can see how it works and it folds flat. So this one is actually just a larger size of one that I made about two, maybe even three years ago. And I will link it up here and it fits two of the Kit Kat biscuits inside. So it's much, much smaller, but I wanted to show a way of making it using your A4 cardstock or your letter paper size. So everybody will be able to make this. And I also wanted to show you a way to decorate your you know, projects without having pattern paper. But today's I am gonna use pattern paper, but this one here, just to give you inspiration, I blended the background and then these are all stamped images and I'll show you exactly which ones they were. But it's a really, really fun um, little project. It's very, very easy to make as well. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So there they are again, slightly different little scenes that I've done there, but the same backgrounds and yeah, just very, very fun. So let me show you how to make them. Okay, so this is what I used for those. So it was a Tonic Studio Garden Gnomes, but I also added in the small little bumblebee and butterfly and kite onto those as well. So, and this was from Papercraft Essentials and it was Spot the Dog from a few months back. And then the tags that I've used were from For the Love of Stamps, which is Hunky Dory and it's tag tan tag tan tag tastic I can't get my words out. And I used May Your Birthday, this one here, and then the, where was the other one I made? Oh, get Well Soon. And today I've done Just Because, okay? All the links will be shared below. I've also got some of my nesting rectangle dies and didn't use those. I was going to, but then I changed my mind. So the paper pad I'm using today is the Bloom and Wonder by First Edition. Really, really lovely one. And I've pulled out these papers here. So you'll see there's the little tag that I've already gone ahead and stamped. I've just fussy cut it. And then I've just put a mat behind there in the pink that I'm using in the actual box. So it just says there, Just Because. And then I've gone ahead and fussy cut some of these moths from the extra bit that I had left over from where I cut this. I've only cut one kind of layer for the front. I don't need to decorate the back because you don't see it. And again, if I just bring in one of these, I've only decorated the front. The back is completely plain. But it's entirely up to you if you did want to decorate that as well. So we'll get straight into the box and I'll talk you through the sizes for that in a moment. So for the tray on the bottom, you want one piece of eight by 10 and a quarter. And on all four sides, you wanna score at one and three quarters. So just rotate each time and score at one and three quarters. Okay. And you don't need the scoreboard anymore, but you will need your metal ruler and a stylus. Okay, so you'll have these score lines now. What we want to do next is you'll see I've already started to do these score lines. Let's get one that shows up a bit better. There we go. You can just make it out there. But you're now going to score in every corner in these squares from where the two score lines cross over up to the corner. Okay, so it's best to use a metal ruler and a metal end stylus there just so you can get a really good impression. Start, put the stylus down first in the corner there where the score lines cross over and then you can score right up and make sure you score right up to the corner there, okay? And just repeat that in all of your four corners. Okay, so next we want to fold and burnish all of these score lines, okay? And then with these ones here, if you flip it over, so all of these score lines are mountain folds when we turn it over. These ones here, you want them to become valley. So you just push in and they will fold in and completely conceal themselves when you fold it around like that, so you can't see it. So you'll see you've got your mountains on the corners and then that one is a valley fold. So 
So just do that on all of your corners and make sure the fold does go right up to the point there. So you've got nice sharp edges. And then you can also just grab your, you know, bone folder there and just burnish all of those so that they will stay in place. Okay. Next, what you want to do is you want the longer side facing you, okay? And you can fold the whole thing in. And all we want to do is add glue to this triangle piece here. So underneath, in here, we're going to stick it down, but just that triangle on every single corner. But it's best if you fold it in because then you can lie everything down flat so that you can make sure it's all secure. So I'm just, with my glue, a thin amount just within that triangle there. So I'll just bring it up. It's the inner triangle, okay? Well, I guess they could both be inner triangles, but you know what I mean? It's the one that's closest to you along the long side there. And then just fold that whole piece over and just stick that corner down there, okay? But do it on both of the ends actually, because then it's easier when you fold it over. So I've just done that one as well. And then just fold the whole thing over and you can just make sure both of those stick down. And then again on this side, you're just doing those inner triangles. And again, fold it over. So just spend a minute making sure that's all secure. Okay, so with the longer sides should now be like that. You see we've got a rectangle. These longer sides you can now stick to these pieces here. Okay, so these measure, you'll want two pieces, one for the front and one for the back, and they're six and three quarters by eight. Okay, so along this nice flat piece here, where you've joined and you know attached the triangles to, you can just add your glue. You can just lay this one down over the top, like so. And again, you can fold everything flat, so it's really easy to be able to, you know, line everything up. You can apply your pressure to make sure everything's secure. So, and then the opposite end, you can just again add your glue. I would say do your handles before you stick these down, but actually I'm going to show you a really easy way to cut them anyway. So even whilst this is all joined together, you can still cut this. So I am going to be using a larger die cutting machine. So decide which panel, because now when these come up, you'll see how our kind of gift box bag is coming together. So I'm going to have this as the front, so if it's directional, make sure it's facing the right way up. I don't think it matters too much with these, but I do want my um, that larger image to be towards the bottom. So I'm going to keep it that way up. So I'm just going to stick this one down. So I've just got my large cutting machine and my plates here. And then I've got my rectangle dies here. And I'm going to use, I'll give you the measurements in a second but because I've already done the actual frames for the handles, so you can see how that's going to sit in there like so. But what you want to do is, well, it's up to you how big you want your handle, but I've got these ones here, which is three by one and a half. So I'm going to lay this down, okay? So don't worry how long this is, because you can still sit it on your plates. So I'm going to pop it on my base plate there, just leave that one to one side. I'm going to grab some tape, because I don't want this to shift when I run it through. And I'm just going to sit it. Again, it's up to you how high up you come. I'm going to probably go about there, because what I want to do is I've die cut these, fussy cut these, but I'm going to sit them right over the same image so they become 3D. I think it will you know, have quite a nice effect. So I'm going to have, bearing in mind I've got my frame, so I think about there. I just want to make sure I'm at a funny angle here, but just get that as straight as you can. That should be okay. And then all you want to do, because you don't want to run the whole thing through, so if you just sit your die towards the top end of your plate here, and then I'm going to put this plate over the top. Now, the only thing the plate will cut is whatever's between you know, the plates. So now I can just run this through, and then I can just pour the rest of the once it gets there, you could go in the other end and feed all that through if you want, because it won't damage it. But if I just, now it's just going to cut that. 
the plates will probably end up falling off actually. So now I can just slide that out that way. So nothing's damaged. And it's cut that really nicely. Okay, and then that is going to sit around there like so, just to give me a nice frame. And to get that, I've used whatever that size is, you want to jump up to, so not the next one, but then the next one, and it will give you that nice frame. So I just stick them together like so with some washi tape between them. If you remove, say that one's not there, you just want to, because I've already done mine, so I just um, didn't want to keep this video that long. But there you can just sit them down and then pop your washi tape like that and then you can lay that, do it on the other side as well, but you can lay that over your black card and just die cut it. Okay, so now with that, you then want to mm, see, this is where it may be better if you don't stick these down first, because I'd say now lay this one down over that one and draw a pencil mark around it and then lay the die down again. But I'm just going to measure, let's grab that one back again, the small one. So I've come down, um, let's have a little look there. We have got seven eighths of an inch exactly. And then I've come in, ooh, what have we got there? Um, seven eighths and then one and seven eighths. So all I need to do is come down seven eighths, put a pencil mark there. And then I can just lay this down until I've got one and seven eighths, which is there. So that's where I need to be with this one. It'll be about there because the cut line is just slightly in and I think about there. As long as it roughly, you know, kind of lines up if you've done it like me. But I would say do this before you stick it down because then you can just lie one on top of the other. But again, just stick that one there. Doesn't matter if you cut from this side or that side, it, you know, it won't make too much of a difference. And then again, you can just, you could pop it right up this end like this and you could put the plate like that. Again, whatever's between the sandwich will cut. And then I can feed all of that through until it gets to the double plates. And then just, sorry, I knocked my camera a bit there. This is such a big, um, you know, machine. So there we go. Now I can take that out and I've got that one. So now when I bring them up, we have our handles, like so. Okay, so next I need to stick these. I did do it white originally, but I'm not so sure. I quite liked that real kind of, you know, although saying that, I'm looking in the monitor and I'm kind of thinking maybe the white would be nicer, actually. It's a bit more, I don't know. No, I'm gonna go with black. There's something just a little bit different about the black. So I think because I've done such a nice kind of fun, um, fresh style with the blended background and the stamped images, you know, this is obviously quite different in comparison. So I'm just going to add some glue and I'm just going to stick these handles over both parts here. So again, you know, there is a bit of strength to this because the box is deconstructed and then you're adding these pieces on, you've got all this is reinforced and then you've reinforced the handle. So you can, you know, you can put something with a bit of weight to it in this. And you could, you know, add, you make your sides um, much, much taller if you wanted to. And like I said, have a look at the Kit Kat one. If you do want to go for something a bit smaller. And then just add my glue on this one. Okay, so I've just got some of my Velcro dots here. Stick those down. And then I just popped them just kind of slightly off from the tops of the handle there. So that one's just slightly off to the left hand side and this one's just slightly off to the right. And then if you bring this one over, but now that all lines up, actually I've got my handle spot on. I'm happy with that. So you can see now it all stays together. And I just love that this all folds flat. So it's like I said, perfect for now you know we can't all see everybody that we want to so by making things like this you could really get ahead of yourself and get all of these things in place you know your tags and things you could make a, diff a variety of different kind of sentiments you've got something ready um, you know for when when you need it and then I can just 
pop that one on there and then with these if I just pop it on its side a bit there so you can see bring in my other glue here and I just thought this was just a slightly different way to decorate it I mean you could have a big sentiment there if you wanted to it's entirely up to you but now I can just sit that one on there so I just curled them up just fussy cut them out and then just kind of curled up the sides so this one um, I'm going to sit it over that one slightly bigger but it still works there we go and then this one here I think I might just have it just on there I think that might look because it is that one there but I don't really want them all together because you can't actually you can't see that at all I've just looked up at the monitor so I will show you in a second maybe that one could go up there yeah we'll pop that one there because then you can see that a bit more but now if I bring it onto its side can you see it's a really pretty one you, you really do notice it in person I just think it's quite a nice a subtle way to decorate it but that's the, how this box looks with pattern paper because it was something I was talking about during the live I'm trying to you know people are requesting the kind of things they'd like to see me do and lots of people have said colouring and 3D projects so I'm trying to do you know I've done the colouring and a 3D project in one just so that I can kind of show off as much as possible during the live crafting so I will link my Facebook group um, it should already be linked anyway which I'm sure it is and I'll also link the mixed up crafters group because again we're getting lots of people coming to join the group it's a lovely place for you to share anything that um, I have shared in tutorials so you know anything that has inspired you and you've made any of the projects that I've shared you can share them over there and it's really nice because to see how different people put a twist on something that I've made you know gives other people more inspiration as well but we're getting loads of people joining so obviously you know people have some people are starting new crafts and um, they've got time to be able to, to join all these groups. So yeah, I welcome anybody to come along. You do have a couple of questions to um, answer, just two questions, um, and then you'll be accepted into the group. But that is today's tutorial and I just love it. So um, I will do the blog post with all of the product that I've used and I'll link it all below because a lot of companies are still offering online. I think we need to support any of our local craft companies where we can. So um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it, you can just see there just how different these will look but both really, really lovely. So thank you for watching. As always, please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and consider subscribing so you get to see, so you get to see more fun tutorials. Thanks for watching, bye.